Hey guys, this is Women's Grandmaster Sabina Foyshore. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, 15 minutes or less day-to-day -day chess games analysis. Yesterday I have showed you my game against Grandmaster Arahamia Grand Gedevan, a really beautiful attacking game. For those who have not seen it yet, please feel free to check my videos. For today I have prepared another uh, one of my games, this time a more recent one uh, against Bertsen Thomas, a game that I played in the Dutch Open this summer. This game was played in the last round of the tournament, so I opted for a more positional approach, bishop f4, uh, and not playing my regular c4 stuff. The reason I, I played bishop f4 in this game was to avoid any kind of preparations, and given that the round was in the morning, maybe my opponent wouldn't have the best clear mind to choose uh, the best plan in this position. So. Uh, he thought for a little bit and played e6, most likely hoping to get back in some kind of Nimzo Indian type of positions after c4, bishop b4. But I did not have that in mind. I played e3, uh, strengthening my center. You might think that um, e3 is not that great of a move because I would like to play e4, have two central pawns, especially because my opponent has none in the center so far. But the reason I play e3 is to make sure that when c5 is being played, I can just develop my knight in f3, and if in case of any capture in d4, I would be able to capture with the e pawn. I want to make sure I, I remain with a central pawn in the center. So that is the reason that I'm playing e3, and I'm not going for a more uh, active type of idea with maybe knight d2 first and then try to play e4. So um, this is this is the London system. Knight c6, c3. Another typical move of the London system. The reason we're playing c3 and not develop the develop the bishop in d3 immediately is because we don't want to allow knight b4. And uh, now our bishop is being chased. We need to move it back and um, just losing one tempo. So um, just playing c3 here before is just stopping any knight before and is also strengthening the d4 pawn. So uh, my opponent played bishop e7 and because I'm not a typical player of the London system I did not realize the threat which is knight h5 trying to um, win my, my bishop in f4. So the reason black cannot just play knight h5, I mean he can play knight h5 but maybe here I could play bishop g5 and escape with my bishop, or at least have it traded for black's black color bishop. But after bishop e7, the bishop is controlling the g5 square, so after knight h5, I won't be having bishop g5. So here, if you decide to play this system yourself, please do not forget to play h3, ensure your bishop. In case of any knight h5, you can go bishop h2. And then, of course, continue your development. But this is really something necessary to do this h3. I did not do it. I played knight bd2, thinking, okay, knight h5 is not that bad. I can always meet it with bishop g3. And in case of any trade in g3, I just take back with the h pawn. The rook is opened. I have a pretty good position. But uh, it's not really that clear. So uh, I should have probably in this position played first bishop e5 to attract black to play either d6 or f6 and then play bishop g3 because of course black does not want to capture an e5 with that knight because of d takes e5 and now the pawn is controlling f6 this knight would be um, lost eventually or just is placed in a really bad position he has to play g6 so now that we can move and bring it back into play. So, um, yeah, bishop e5 would have been a better choice first, but I went for bishop g3. My opponent played d5, putting another pawn in the center. Bishop g3, just a natural developing move. And now black could have just waited a little bit longer to capture the bishop in g3 since it's not going anywhere. But my opponent thought of just capturing it immediately, getting rid of his badly placed knight in h5. Of course, we are taking back with the h pawn always towards the center, and in the same time, I'm opening up the h file for my rook. The bishop also is um, on the diagonal attacking the same 
h7 pawn, so black is somewhat forced to play h6. g6 would have been another possibility, and then having the idea of bringing bishop f8 g7 or f6 g7 on the diagonal to cover up the weakened black squares uh, around the king side, but um, again, it is not very pleasant to castle with, with this rook on the h file. And uh, I won't be castling short here. I would be most likely playing queen e2 and then castle long and uh, e4, opening up the position and starting the attack towards the king. So um, my opponent went for h6, thinking that the position is more close this way. There won't be any kind of ideas on the h file. And uh, he can just finish his development and have a nice position with center space. But he maybe underestimated this g4. And uh, with g4, eventually I want to play g5, open up the h file. I'm not worried about weakening the king side since, as I mentioned earlier, I will be canceling long side. Bishop f6. My opponent would like to play e5, but in this particular position it does not work as I just capture and my queen is defending g4 pawn and then I can just start pushing um, the pawns on the king side, then bring my queen to f3, castle long, and have a really good attacking uh, position. So my opponent played bishop f6 first, helping the push of e5. But with bishop f6, he's allowing me to capture in c5 and get a reversed Slav defense with uh, d takes c4. Black does that move in the reversal, I mean in the Slav, and now I do the same, just d takes c5, and I could hold on to that pawn. I was a little bit worried though about uh, e5, but there's really no need to worry. Uh, I have the pawn up now, uh, bishop f5 is possible, or knight h2 defending g4, and um, just playing the position with the pawn up. I preferred not to give black any kind of attacking chances, since my opponent seemed to be a really good attacking player, so I went for bishop b5. My idea after bishop b5 is to play knight e5, blockade this pawn in e6, and make sure the bishop in c8 remains closed um, by its own pawns. So um, here my opponent surprised me. He played, bishop, uh, he played castle. Um, going with the king right there where I have my rook ready and g5 ready to, to be pushed, he seemed not to be worried about this, this and okay, he was he was most likely right not to be worried about it. Uh, probably I would have chosen to play bishop g7 though, just finishing up my development and now if takes, takes knight e5. Uh, White still has a very good position um, with the strong knight in e5, getting ready to play f4, g5, but black as well has the bishop pair, can try to open up the position. Uh, capturing in d4, then b5, um, a5, b4, trying to do the minority attack. That would have been something that I would consider as black. But my opponent, as I mentioned, made castle. Queen c2, getting ready for some weaknesses here in h7. And uh, he took in d4. E takes d4, as I mentioned to you. That was the reason why I was playing e3, the third move. E5. Now black is trying to utilize the fact that my king is still in the center, also that g4 is not protected, so he's just opening up the position. Now, if I had not calculated this e5, most likely I would be very worried here. What am I going to do? Thankfully, I have this nice continuation, bishop takes e6, pawn takes e6, d takes e5, and um, the e file is now a little bit closed. I'm planning on castling long, and the position seems to be good for me. Well, at least that's what I thought, because if rook e8, I can just castle long, takes, 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 knight f3, followed by g5, and uh, my pieces are all opening up to attack black's king. Bishop e7, again, would be met by queen a4, defending the g4 pawn, followed by long castle, and again, working on playing g5. But unfortunately, I missed this bishop g5, which is a very good move, considering that he's attacking still g4. 
He's taking the bishop away from the attack. Now the only defending move that I have is queen a4. And now bishop takes d2. I am forced to take with the knight because with the king, just imagine a king in the center with c5, d4 coming. It's definitely not pleasant. So knight takes d2, somewhat forced. Queen g5, double attack. And here uh, f3 does not work because queen e3 check. Um, and now I won't be able to castle anymore. And there's c5, e4, d4 coming up, opening the position. So um, I went for knight f3, allowing queen takes g4. And here I should have just traded queens and played this endgame, where my knight is probably better than the bishop. I have a nice um, majority on this side of the board, um, and I can just play f3, kick the bishop away, then f4, put my king in f2, bring my rooks on the files, and just um, uh, attack his, uh, his weaknesses. But I went for rook h4, forgetting that black can take capture in g2. I thought this was the, the best move for black, and now I would take back with the rook, and then if I cast along, I just have a really great position. But um, queen g2 would have been winning for black, because after king e2, he has this good move, rook b8, provoking me to play b3, and now queen g6. And my queen does not control c2 anymore, and this queen is coming to, to use the fact that my king remained uh, in the center. And if rook g1, check, rook e8, just imagine my king. My opponent thankfully played queen g6 immediately, he did not go for the g-pawn. Long castle. Bishop f5, trying to utilize this uh, weakness in my king's, uh, king's position. And here I had to play g3 or g4, and then um, um, kick this bishop away from here, try to, um, to afterwards bring the rook to attack, you know, slowly. But I did not realize what's the threat of black. So I played queen f4, thinking... I'm bringing my queen, the queen in a4 is not doing anything anymore, I need to bring it to the attack, which normally would be a good idea, just that I totally underestimated black's threat, which was bishop b1. And after bishop b1, the threat is queen c2 check, and I'm somewhat forced of playing rook d2 or knight e1, and with knight e1, I'm closing the action of my rook, I cannot bring my rook to h1 immediately, and now black can just capture in a2, again having queen b1 threats, and this diagonal is getting really, really annoying. <laughs> so, um, thankfully, my opponent played c5, trying to stop me from playing knight d4, but that was not at all my idea. I played rook h1, and he played bishop b1, but one move too late. After knight e1, my rook is already out, and bishop a2 now wouldn't do anything, because there's rook g4, check, knight c2, and now my attack is much faster than his. Rook g7 is coming up, queen h6 and mate. And black doesn't have anything. So um, he had to play f6 and open up a little bit the position. But um, after rook g4, queen, queen f5, I was supposed to trade queens and uh, my position wouldn't be that, that great. He blundered here, queen h7. And I hope you can see this beautiful sacrifice. Rook takes h6, rook takes h6, queen g7, king takes b1. I have two pawns for the exchange and this rook h3, rook g3 idea. So black is forced to bring a rook to, to protect that uh, loss for the queen. It's also attacking e5, so I have to play knight f3, rook h3, rook g6. And here I have this nice move, knight h4. And black has no really good move to move for his rook. Rook g4 is forced, and now beautiful knight f5, uh, taking the queen, threatening also queen takes g4, queen takes g4, and knight h6 check. But most importantly, knight e7 mate. And here my opponent ha has no defense, uh, so he resigned. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this game. There were mistakes on both sides. It's a very interesting system to play from time to time. So, um, well, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this game. Feel free to uh, leave me comments and feedback. And looking forward to 
Seeing you soon on my next video tomorrow. Stay tuned.